This is the new Audi e-tron S Sportback. So there's a new Sporty S version, both for the e-tron and the e-tron Sportback. And here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas, we're going to find out more about exterior, interior and of course the special driving experience today not only on the road but also on a small test track with the acceleration test and also test of this new torque vectoring system because the electric motor setup here in this s version is indeed different let's find out more in full hd full screen and full length let's go In the front we can already see a strong look here for the S model. It's not too different from the S line version that is also available. We had that recently also. You can also check out that review. So we have stronger lower bumpers here for example and also this grille of course here rather closed for the EV. The S model then has the S batch right here. We have a Catalonia red color car for today but there's also for example Navara blue available some other different colors as well there you can see we have it also for you in the shots that either you come with a silver look here for example in Navara blue car but here then with this vehicle you also have the black package which is an option then you have the black front grille and more black accentuations all over the vehicle depending on what you like headlamps start with LED Optional matrix LED and optional optional the new digital matrix light with micro mirrors and that one will also be available then for some night projections that you can draw something on the road some information for the assistance system and so on of course at a later stage at the night drive we can also do a special feature on that today it's day all day so to say and here we can see wider wheel arches for the S model, 2.3 centimeters or about an inch wider on each side. And also you can see here, this is not a design element. The air really goes through. So this is for more wind efficiency then. So overall a bolder look already in the front for the true S model. Four meters 90, 16 foot one or 193 inches is the length of the Audi e-tron, both the same for the Sportback and for the SUV model, yeah came from this side here today and you can see here the S model and again has the painted wheel arches same with the wheel -like car and also wider both in the front and also in the rear again for the stronger stands on the road the sport pack has also this falling roof line right there to give it this sports coupe SUV stance so to say then we have the optional digital mirrors you do not have to go for them and they are an option. They look of course quite fancy and are also better as for the wind efficiency. But if they're really effective as for safety, again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Charging here, the main charge point on the left side will be different than with the UK vehicle, for example. Here, AC charging 11 or optional 22 kilowatt. And DC 150 kilowatt max here with the bigger battery version that automatically comes with the S. And by the way, if you close it here again, this small cap will also automatically go back. And on the passenger side, an option, as I said, here another AC charger. Just the AC charger available here, but I think that's also fine. It's a practical solution when the charging station is at the other side suddenly or something. So, and of course, again, for a UK version, that would be the other way around that you have the DC on this side and the additional AC on the other. And wheels, they start same as for the S line with 20 inch. And here we have the optional 21 inch wheels for today. Pretty massive look, of course. So what do you think about the S model? Do you like it, especially in this striking Catalonia red color? By the way, you can even go up to 22 inch wheels optional but that of course reduces the comfort the audi e-tron in general comes with a air suspension as a standard in the s line and also here in the s model the air suspension has a stiffer setup here even a little bit stiffer and you cannot de-pick it in the s line you can go for the soft setup optional and here you always have the stiffer air suspension setup 
according to the model. Then we have here a spoiler in the vehicle color and there's a special diffuser style so to say in the lower area for the S model. Other than that you have this typical light strip that goes all over the vehicle, very beautiful rear signature and then this e-tron s batch here also at the rear and then let's talk about the technology because this is really different here with the e-tron s so usually you have an electric motor in the front and also one in the, at the rear here actually they put the rear electric motor from the normal rear to the front of this car and then at the rear here they put two electric motors so one per side one Per wheel so overall three electric motors and because they are separate electric motors here at the rear this enables an active torque vectoring so you can have for example more power at one side when you are in the corner that is in difference to a passive torque vectoring where you use brake intervention to create the power difference between the wheels and of course we will experience this one today on the racetrack and now a diesel look at the second vehicle right here also Audi e-tron s sportback but here then in navara blue it's a dark blue color but you can see different light nuances here a very beautiful one as well and then you can see this would be the standard setup here with the s front grille so stronger lower bump as well but then here the silver contrast whereas with the catalonia red vehicle we had the black pack as well but i think here it of course serves as a bigger contrast especially to the blue so i think a more elegant approach here the other the more sinister approach i think i would take it rather in this style here by the way also with 21 inch wheels and there's also a second difference because here the wheel arches are not painted in vehicle color but in this contrasting gray but also with a metallic paint and last but not least this car is not equipped with the virtual mirrors so these are the standard mirrors also serve as another contrast so i think visually it's more attractive and also as i told you earlier i'm more now for the classic style as for the mirrors i think it's just a better way to look in the rear. Then you look at the rear, spoiler lip in the vehicle color, then again the light strip all over the vehicle. But here then again with, would be the standard setup with the silver contrast in the lower part in the very same form. So what would be your choice for today? So let's take a look under the hood here. And well, there's a storage space here for your cables, the so-called frunk. Of course, a nice solution then although there could be more space but remember this was not originally an all-electric platform so it's more an adapted electric vehicle so to say and we can see some of the electric components right here and let me talk about the figures first of all there are two different battery sizes for an audi e-tron in general here the e-tron s gets the bigger battery automatically and that is 95 kilowatt hours of capacity gross the net would be 86 kilowatt hours with that you can also then calculate according to the energy consumption which is about and i'll test here about 25 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers and then you can also calculate the range which is about 320 kilometers of range or about 200 miles of range whereas the non-s model was a little bit better 370 kilometers or 230 miles so you lose a little bit of range due to the new hardware setup but of course you get more power 500 horsepower is the power peak and almost a thousand newton meters of torque that of course very massive excavation figure 4.5 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour and this is really faster than the other model which would have, would have 5.7 seconds so almost one and a half seconds quicker than in the acceleration test the all-wheel drive distribution by the way is a standard rear wheel bias 40 in the front 60 percent in the rear but it's super adaptive it's you know it can do anything basically it's just that they picked this basic setup to always have you know a lot of power everywhere so to say but with a rear wheel bias however if you're just rolling you're basically driving rear wheel only again this new setup one motor in the front two in the rear here exclusive for the e-tron s model This is the car key here with the S batch and door closing sound first. Mm, this is very solid, cool. But this option here is also meant not to be <laughs> a 
slammed because here we also have the soft touch, uh, soft close. It is. Hmm, magic. But that's also one disadvantage here because when you want to open the doors very, you know, very, very quickly, then there's always a resistance here because there's this electric motor that uses the soft close. Hmm. So you cannot have both. Then inside of the doors with nice Alcantara touch here for the S model, also soft touch above that, very good for the buttons, so the window buttons here with the clicking sound, then the digital mirrors here, again an option, you can see an Audi A3 sedan and you can also adjust the height and also how exactly you want to see and for the other side you just switch it here and then you see there's nothing happening here but the same that happened before here is just happening on the other side so at the second mirror and also like this so it depends really on the brightness outside day and night and so on the good thing is you don't have a blind spot but then again it is so to say an unrealistic view in comparison to a mirror you rather have a flat view to me it doesn't really function that well with the brain because you know, when you have a mirror, it's more plastic, it's more three-dimensional, and here you're a little bit disconnected from reality. That's how I experience it. Then, S entry batch in the lower part here for the S vehicle, of course. We know that also from other S line vehicles, for example. Then we have a steering wheel also with the S batching and some contrast stitches on the inside, right there. Soon more about the virtual instruments and so on. And the S model also comes standard with sport seats. It starts with standard sport seats with separated head restraints and optional these here, the S sport seats with integrated head restraints. Usually both come with Alcantara on the inside as standard. Here, optional animal skin. It also depends on the market. Sadly, so much animal skin use, of course, not really useful at all and especially not useful for a sporty vehicle and also for a vehicle that's supposed to be more sustainable. Yeah, they really have to work on that. At least the European setup would be majorly Alcantara on the inside. Then let's get inside. It's easy entry and you have a very good seating position here in the front. The seat form is also quite comfortable. Non-sport seats here in the e-tron models are available outside the S range and they are a little bit more comfortable if you go for normal e-tron, for example, just stick with the base seats. They're a little bit more open also good for long-term comfort here especially then with the animal skin surface and the stitching that gets a little bit hard over time one meters 86 or six foot one and that still leaves a lot of headroom right there there is also a panoramic roof available for this vehicle but it's not in here today just a black or dark ceiling and yeah that's of course makes it a little bit dark here on the inside. However, it's an open atmosphere. Soon I'll also give you deals to the screens with a digital screen here on the left part and also the central one. These two here play together, 10.1 inch on the top part and 8.6 inch on the lower part. Soon more details to that. There's one specific thing, another one for the S model here, and that is where you put your hand here on this shifting area, there's another stamped S logo, for example. And one more look here at a different interior. So this is just a different color, same seats, sadly also all the full animal equipment but here with a bright gray style and also different deco element here on the top here the cockpit overview again a very clean setup hardly any real buttons left then you have this huge console here in the top part here also with a special structure very interesting the e-tron batch will be illuminated at night for example soft touch materials also on the top of the dashboard here again, you see this dual screen setup, 10.1 inch and 8.6 inch, and they also interact with each other. I'll soon show you more to that. Then here, the steering wheel with these huge gaps. Right side, you have a volume control. Left side, you control the digital instruments, and soon we'll also show you more details to these. And you also have here then electric control of the steering wheel. And the shifting pedals here, right and left, there are no gears, but you can, for example, pull them twice and then you have more recuperation and if you wonder yes with these two electric motors at the rear this car can even have a stronger recuperation power than the other models very interesting and they also stay as for the recuperation modes when you switch something in the MMI I'll soon show that to you other than that in the lower part you have then here in this black pack a black start stop button to light up the engine and then 
have this shifting lever, which is a little bit strange because the P parking is at the side. And then for driving, you pull it backwards, and for reverse, you push it forward. Hmm. A little bit unusual, you get along with it, but I think, you know, especially like switching from drive and rever reverse and drive and so on, sometimes you didn't really know which gear you're in. You can see it here, but, you know, who looks at that? Um, so I think not that very, um, you know, not that intuitive. And then here in the lower area, this is like an open, it's supposed to be a floating area, designers told me, but I think, yeah, it looks a little bit unfinished. There are some cup holders here, which are also adaptive, and then your smartphone will be put in here, but I always put a microfiber towel below that, uh, so it's a little bit softer, otherwise it would be flying around all the time. So not ideal solution, I think. And the two USB-C chargers and this armrest here below some more space. 12.3 inch virtual cockpit, really very clear display and you can have different views. By the way, here this is already some, you know, used something of the battery. We have a shot earlier also where there is full battery range here for this S model. You can have a different view like this and of course you can also put in the GPS map either just small or also all the way over the place. Now to the central infotainment unit. There is a good overview menu. This is also here another possibility to have some, you know, like quick access, but I rather just use this view here. And then for example, you have the car menu where there you can have the out drive select. It's also possible to pick it in the lower part with the arrows. And you can see that the air suspension adapts to the driving mode here. For example, in dynamic mode, we go a little bit lower. Other than that, what is also interesting is here, charging and efficiency, efficiency assist. Here, when you set it to automatic recuperation, the car rather does it itself and always resets your command on the steering wheel with the pedals. When you have set it here to manual, then it sticks with the mode you have set with the shifting pedals and probably also what I would actually go for. As for the GPS, it always looks impressive here, especially with the satellite view. There's also the test track we are, where we are on later. We cannot use all of it, but we can accelerate out this straight here, for example, and take some of the corners here. This is really cool, so fancy stuff. And then we also have the Apple CarPlay integration. And this looks like with a map, but then there is also integration all over the screen. And this sound system here, it's really fancy, so great surround sound, especially then here with the optional Bang & Olufsen sound system. And in the lower part, you control the temperature. Um, you hit it either like this, or you can also slide like this. And also here for the vent strength, this is also possible, same thing, seat heating. And you can also use the voice input here, change temperature to 21 degrees. increase the temperature to 21 degrees there it goes so sometimes it works very well sometimes also you have to repeat commands and by the way to sync the temperature from left to right you can press sync here in the lower part or the alternative would be to use a swiping gesture like this in the rear view camera like this and when you switch from reverse to drive mode it also switches here to the front view or the rear view front view rear view front view rear view Homer Simpson. <laughs> and you also have a 3D surround view here in this highest spec than for the assistant systems like this. Yeah, it doesn't show the red color we have here, but at least it's still fancy and you can, for example, then um, here also here with the tires, that's also possible right and left tire view that they don't damage these rims. Yeah, and then for example, you can see, oh, there's a tripod next to the vehicle. And now we'll look at the head-up display here of the Audi e-tron S. It's a very nice option and you can see the current speed, the allowed speed and also some GPS information. By the way, the top speed here of the e-tron S is 210 kilometers an hour or 130 miles an hour. And now to the rear, also easy entry and you have enough leg room right here. So for tall adults, absolutely no problem. This is the sport bag. So there is a little bit less headroom, but you can see here with one with a six or six with one, even if I put myself back, it still works. Of course, the SUV classic form would continue a little bit further here and obviously a little bit more space if you're, for example, even taller than me. 
We have some manual shades here, especially for the kids also. And it's really good, nice and upright seating position here in the rear. So can't complain about that at all. It's really good also for longer term. Also with some Alcantara at the inside here and with the same seat that we have in the front, basically here in the rear. There is also this middle seat. You see the bolt string here is a little bit stiffer actually. So it's more thought out to be you sit on the outside each. Um, there is no real middle tunnel here because there's no need for like, you know, like transmission and so on. However, due to this really cool climate unit we have here, this middle part is not used that well. So um, you could have more space in this EV if they would really use the advantages. And then, and I mean, I can sit here. It's possible. Also decently comfortable. It's okay. But again, I would have wished they just put more space in the rear because there's no need to make it that voluminous. And then this climate unit here in detail, put on the ignition now. And the best or easiest way to control is by sliding the temperature here. And also seat heating is available. But again, you have to go for that optional for this four zone AC. Then you can fold down this armrest right here with adaptive cup holders. And at the same time, you can use this one here as a ski hatch to load things through. Other than that, you can already flip the seats from here like this and then in a one-third, two-third split. So let's open this electric hatch. Instead of 600 liters with the SUV, you have 555 liters here with the Sportback. The only thing you lose here is a little bit height right here, but I think you can rather live with that. So still very well usable trunk. This one can be removed actually. And below this net, you can also remove that. It's also quite good to secure some things. There's a little bit more storage here. You can see it also would work with a replacement tire, actually. Well, then let me give you some measurements and you can also flip the seats. I'll just do it with one side or right here. Best to go around and the normal trunk length here. This is about almost one meters and 10 in the normal length. If we switch to the width right here is also a little bit more than a meter. So that's a good result right there and the height here is about yeah you know, almost 50 centimeters so that's also pretty decent and indeed is right here just in the very back part of the vehicle then it gets closer than to 40 centimeters i think you can still live with that so it's actually still a good compromise and then the maximum loading length <laughs> here up to the seat as i would be driving this is really good it's almost one meters 90. And we also have a cutaway model for you here today from the Audi e-tron S. You can see the front, there's one electric motor right there. Then for the whole front axle, you can see that the batteries are placed very low and centralized in the vehicle to keep the center of gravity low. This also ensures a very good driving dynamic. We've felt that already with the first test, definitely. And then here the rear, this is then the new thing for the S model. One and two. So there's like one casing together. This one here with a special cutaway here with, you know, plexiglass. But there's like two electric motors and one then for this wheel, one for this wheel. And then we can imagine we are in the corner and then this wheel can turn faster than the other one when we're, for example, turning left. It was also possible before, but then just by brake intervention, but here then actively by speeding up the other wheel and this gives than this addition of dynamic. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge with the Audi e-tron Sportback S or e-tron S Sportback, however you want to take it. We're here in an Audi test center and therefore I can really accelerate it out 4.5 seconds to 100 kilometers or 60 miles now is the official figure. Can we reach it? Dynamic mode, S shifting mode, maximum 500 horsepower at the peak and almost a thousand Newton meters of torque. Let's see. And then I'll also turn some, you know, short laps here for the corners and stuff. Let's go. Nice.
that was 145 kilometers an hour so quick I reduced the speed right there because there were some birds flying over the road of course safety for the birds is way more important than us accelerating it out further wow really cool and i mean how silent and smooth this acceleration came of course here the tesla model s performance or the model 3 performance model they give you more boost but this is of course here also a heavy car and still really really cool from that performance and of course you do feel a difference to the normal e-tron models here one and a half seconds faster and what else is important it's the cornering when i'm going out of the corner here i feel it's a little bit more agile a little bit lighter and here the air suspension setup is even a little bit stiffer that too so and why is that actually so first of all the air suspension hardware is the same as we would get with the s-line model and here but here in the true s model it has a little bit stiffer setup then and also in dynamic mode and here when we accelerate out the corner we can use this new torque vectoring system because we now have these two electric motors at the rear one at the front the bigger one from the rear is put to the front here from the, from the rear from the normal model front in this model but then two new electric motors in the rear one per wheel so to say and that means there's an active torque vectoring so here now on the left corner the right wheel the electric motor the right wheel can give us more torque and maybe you also heard that so there's like you know some kind of drifting possible um yeah not really but just a little bit you know you know tighter corners yeah i feel that i'm a little bit getting pushed out of the corner very interesting you know yeah i mean it's still a heavy and big vehicle but considering it's such a big and heavy vehicle it drives astonishingly agile really cool now we're taking the corner a little bit tighter here <laughs> yeah pushing a little bit over the front wheels but definitely this electric all-wheel drive is rear wheel bias so there's more power at the rear definitely and again this new torque vectoring makes the car even a little bit more agile there was torque vectoring before yes however there was a passive torque vectoring by breaking in the inner wheel here they don't need to break in the inner wheel they can just accelerate the outer wheel a little bit more and that's the key then for a uh, you know more agile driving experience here again some slalom again it feels like a smaller vehicle and the electric drive makes it so agile and look at how precise the steering is actually so there's no dead zone area and all my commands into the steering wheel are really transported onto the road now I'll really push it again here out of the corner there we go so a very fun driving experience hardly ever was such a big suv so sporty to drive so we know the tesla model x has of course a better range figure so to say but driving agility wise the audi really leads it yeah they do have a problem with the animal skin seats here definitely same with today but driving wise wow really such a pleasure to drive this vehicle once again it's not that this um, s model here is feeling like a completely different vehicle like the non-s especially recently drove the s line but definitely you feel a little sportier tune then suspension wise and then this torque vectoring together with the plus in horsepower that gives us a little bit more sporty fun a little bit more boost so really impressed here what we experienced on the test track so what do you think here about our first very sporty impressions oh by the way braking wise um, we can also use the full recuperation here of course we can test that um, we can actually set that the settings are also being you know remained as we like to have them so when i'm hitting the throttle and then going off the throttle car is recuperating and it also remains then this way actually and when we go off the s mode when i'm just going into the normal driving mode i can also show you that a little bit better normal auto mode here usually we can increase the recuperation here with the left pedals and it stays this way and i 
took it to the manual mode so otherwise when we would have to automatic as soon as you hit the brakes this is reset it but here now i have the proof when i set it to manual here in these um you know in the um, efficiency assist then again full recuperation when i go off the throttle it's not a super harsh recuperation that's not how they set this out too but still with this you know strongest recuperation they have here you can somewhat drive this car with the one pedal feeling not maybe 100 percent but let's say 60 or 70 then when you need more braking then of course you can use the normal brakes and then first the recuperation is being used and when you need even more braking performance then the real brakes set in And now to some normal driving on the road and when we rate the comfort of a vehicle and you should also watch out for that when you watch other reviewers the wheel size is always crucial so today here we have 21 inch wheels that means it will be a little bit less comfortable than the very very same vehicle with 20 inch wheels and we had the e-tron sportback without the s just the s line with 20 inch wheels however here the suspension is also with a little stiffer setup but it's not too different because it's the same air suspension hardware and the 21 inch wheels so and that naturally and overall gives a little stiffer feeling on the road and as long as the road is well done it's no problem but when there are some small bumps in the road then you feel a little bit more however considering also other sports vehicles this here is still a good compromise air suspension so to say and i really like that so you can drive it very comfortably no problem also one of the main aspects is that this car is super super silent so the noise insulation is superb of course the ev no engine sound is silent but also at higher speeds and even at higher speeds for example sometimes it's the case that you might have let's say the engine noise and this kind of covers the wind noise but that's not the case here in the ev of course but still even due to or even though that fact it's still super super silent we've driven the e-tron sport without, without the s also on the motorway like 200 kilometers 125 miles an hour it's so super super silent well the energy consumption here is higher of course because there is diff different hardware in it and there's one electric motor plus you know running further um, so the efficiency is definitely changed even if you would drive the car in a very very same matter of course it always majorly depends on you know how you hit the throttle and if you ever wondered what's the <laughs> what's the consumption on the racetrack it's exactly double what you would usually score so here in the e-tron s sportback or also e-tron s suv um, a realistic energy consumption figure if you drive it calmly yeah would be about like 25 26 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers when you drive it efficiently and it was like double on the racetrack now so like 48 49 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers and you know that's of course nothing that is you know astonishing it's actually also the same as for combustion engine vehicles that you double the, con the fuel consumption and if you then think about the non s version we could get it to like 23 kilowatt hours and one kilometers so a little bit more efficient indeed and so you see that this different hardware does play a role even if you drive it in a very calm way however always use the recuperation that's of course good and i mean that also makes an electric vehicle an ideal track car you l use less of the normal brakes and also you use just less energy because you always can use the maximum of recuperation that's of course a big advantage and i really think that even for you know um just some private racing electric vehicles will play a major role in the future because 
it will be way cheaper to maintain that. Racing, of course, not the biggest um, issue here with the e-tron Sportback or in the e-tron in general, even not with the S. The question is, should you go for the S model here? I mean, it's a little bit more fun to drive, especially with this torque vectoring, but that rather plays an effect when you really hammer it here on the racetrack. In normal street driving here, it doesn't make such a difference. And the acceleration is already really very good as well with the normal model. Here, of course, yeah, you know, this 4.5 seconds in, instead of um, 5.7 is the maximum the acceleration figure with the big battery non-S model. It feels more agile and is faster, yes, but it doesn't change the world. So I would still go with the bigger battery version, but then the non-S version, then you have a little bit more driving comfort and everyday driving life. So I would rather stick then with the non-S version to have a little bit more driving comfort and it's still already a very, very sporty ride with that one. However, if you want the sportiest out of this vehicle, then the S version is for you. And I can assure you that it's not like with, let's say you would take an Audi RS model, then you definitely have less comfort for that additional sportiness. But here, actually, you know, you can drive it in a very comfortable way still. So I think that's still a good compromise they've done here with the S model. So um, you do lose then a little bit of the range. Here now, again, by the way, we scored exactly 25 kilometers, uh, 25 kilowatt hours more kilometers for this test right here. So that you know, confirms our, um, our consumption and range estimate, which is then here at about 320 kilometers at full charge, about 200 miles, whereas we had about 370 kilometers or 230 miles with the non-S model. So after all, you will lose then um, about 50 kilometers or about yeah, 25, 30 miles of range overall when you go with this S model due to the different hardware. And of course, yeah, at some point you will use this additional power you have available here. But in general, I can again say such a great riding here, great steering input, so silent in the ride, yet powerful. And for this size of a vehicle, so agile to drive. So from all the driving dynamics we have here and the overall comfort, sport, compromise and so on, definitely a flawless experience. And some comments about the assistant systems right here, predictive cruise control. So either the distance to the car in front of me is being realized or even in front of that roundabout, the speed would be reduced by the predictive cruise control. And then, you know, I'm not on the brakes. I'm not on the throttle at the moment. And see here, and now when I'm getting out of the uh, roundabout, then the speed is being increased again. And again, I did not accelerate. Then the system recognized I'm entering a village, or like village speed 50, then it's also adapting the speed. So that's really, really well done. The blind spot monitor is integrated in these screens. It will flash yellow when someone is behind us. And that's of course really, you know, very useful because again, I'm not the biggest fan of these mirrors. They are adaptive, yes. The, um, you know, the virtual mirrors, but um, I think um, the thing is, you don't draw a connection in your brain that well as with normal mirrors, you know. So here you have a 2D screen and it doesn't seem to be, you know, um, that realistic. You know what I mean? When you are looking in the normal mirror, that's reality for you. You have the top one and then here and then there and there. And here, the 2D screen, you always get a feeling of, well, this is a computer game. And I know that I'm sitting here, but you know, just like in a subtle brain um, function, it's like, oh, this is a computer game. This is not that real. If I would turn on to the left now, it's not that dangerous. But with the mirror, you more get the immediate feeling, this is reality, but just mirrored. So I'm more cautious. Of course, I'm aware that it's, you know, that is happening, but just, you know, on a, on a subtle brain function. So I think normal mirrors, would still be way to go. It's a fancy feature and you don't have a blind spot. That's an advantage, yes. Yet again, I think the normal mirrors will serve us better. Not exactly sure if this is really like, you know, a big step forward technology wise.
And now to our conclusion for today with the Audi e-tron S Sportback. Again, S version both for the Sportback and also for the normal SUV. And what does it actually change? First of all, the exterior. I mean, the S line was already quite sporty. This one then a little bit bolder also, especially here with the wheel arches left and right. So interior, not too many changes, little notch here and there. Of course, what's missing are more animal skin alternatives in the higher trims. Overall, the build quality is really high. The sound system, the optional one, really expensive, but a very good performance, definitely. And also the whole user interface, I think is also pretty easy to learn. Then driving wise, this car in general, both SUV and Sportback is really, really impressive. So it handles so well, it handles like a smaller vehicle, although it's big and very, very heavy. With the new torque vectoring system, with the additional electric motor, with two electric motors at the rear, you can get out of the corners a little bit quicker. However, you rather feel this effect when you really push the vehicle. So for everyday driving life, it won't make the biggest difference. The acceleration, of course, is faster. You will notice that in this sport version here. However, you have the more power, yes, but then also because of this different hardware setup from the electric motors, the range will also drop a little bit. Whereas with the normal version, bigger battery, we had about 370 kilometers of range, so about 230 miles. Here, in the S version, we are about 320 kilometers of range, which would only be about 200 miles. So yes, the range drops a little bit, However, you know, you would not buy this car if you want to cover long distances anyway. This wouldn't be the main goal of this vehicle. Still, you know, it's a very cool and sporty, attractive version. I would rather go for the non-S version to have a little bit more range. It's already fast enough and it's also a little bit less expensive because if you think here for the additional S setup with the additional motor also in the rear, you pay about 15,000 euros or dollars extra you get the sportier package definitely if you want that of course you can also go a little bit more cost effective but definitely very impressive what this car could deliver here on the racetrack today or on the test track because driving wise from the driving agility i think there's nothing that comes close to it in this very segment both ev and combustion engine so that's it for today Thanks so much for tuning in and also tune in to more electric vehicle reviews here. We will link some of the interesting one in the video description and in the pinned comment. See you there.